This is a GCSE video about electrical properties. We saw in the last video that electrons have a negative charge, and it's electrons that we rely on for electricity. Now the negative charge can move around a circuit, so if we have a complete circuit made of metal wires, metal conducts electricity, and if we have a complete circuit, then electrons can move from the battery all the way around the circuit and back to where they started from. So if these electrons can move, then we can have a flow of charge. That charge, that negative charge, is moving. <clears throat> so when that charge moves, what's actually happening is those electrons are flowing down these wires, and we call that flow of charge current, and we give that the letter I. Now current is a measurement of how much charge is flowing in any amount of time, so the current is equal to the amount of charge, remember that's measured in coulombs, divided by the amount of time that it takes. So current is charge divided by time. Now in order for electrons to move around the circuit, they need some sort of energy. You can give electrons energy from a battery. Now just like a ball needs energy to start moving, if you give it potential energy by putting it at the top of a hill, it will roll down the hill, it will move. Just like that, the electrons need energy, and we call that potential energy as well. So here, for the ball example, there is, let's say, a potential energy of two joules, and here, there is a potential energy of zero joules. So the ball has more potential energy up here than it does down here. In the same way, the electrons have more potential energy just as they leave the battery and less potential energy when they get back. Now, what we measure in circuits is that potential difference. The difference in the potential energy at one point in a circuit to another point in a circuit. And we call that voltage as well as potential difference, and we give it the letter V. Now there's an important relationship between voltage and current. So if you cr increase the amount of voltage, you're increasing the potential difference, the increasing the energy that you're giving the electrons, then more electrons are going to flow in a certain amount of time. So we know that voltage is definitely directly proportional to current. The higher the voltage, the higher the current, and the relationship there is a letter called R, and that is the resistance of the circuit. Resistance is how much the circuit, the components in the circuit, try to stop the electrons flowing. So if, some, if the, you have a component like a resistor here that, is very, that has a very high resistance, it's, tr it's trying very hard to stop those electrons flowing. So voltage is current times resistance. Now you can actually measure all these quantities if you have a simple circuit with a component here. Let's say we wanted to find out the resistance of this resistor here. Now first of all we need to measure the voltage uh, and the potential difference. The potential difference and the voltage are basically the same thing. So we do that by, let's say we want to find the difference in voltage here, potential difference between here and here. So we use what is called a voltmeter. It's a circle with a V in it on the, on the circuit diagram. So this voltmeter is going to tell us the difference between this point here and this point here, the potential difference. Now we also need to find out the current. Now remember, current is the amount of electrons that are flowing in a certain amount of time, the amount of charge that is flowing in a certain amount of time. So we use an ammeter for that, and that is a circle with the letter A in it. Now the ammeter has to go in the actual circuit. If we put the ammeter outside of the circuit like this, then no electrons would flow through it because they're all going through here, so the ammeter would just say zero. 
So we have to have the ammeter in the circuit because it's measuring how many electrons are flowing through that part of the circuit at any moment. The voltmeter has to be connected outside of the circuit because it's measuring the potential difference between two different points. If we put the voltmeter here, it's going to tell us the potential difference between this point and this point, and that will always be zero because it's measuring the potential difference at the exact same place. So, the voltmeter goes here, around the component that you want to measure the, the, the potential difference of, and the ammeter goes here, within the circuit. So if we then have a current, let's say we have one amp, and here we have a voltage, let's say we have 12 volts, then we can find out the resistance of this circuit because we know that V equals IR, and we know that V is 12, current is 1, so resistance there is 12 and we measure resistance in something called ohms, which is this strange symbol here, which is called an omega. So resistance is measured in ohms, volts is measured in volts, I'm sorry, voltage or potential difference is measured in volts, and current is measured in amps. And current, we give the letter I to. Now there is a third property of a circuit that we need to consider, and that is the power of the circuit. You've heard the expression, oh, you've got a powerful computer, or that hairdryer is very powerful, or something like that. And the power, the scientific definition for power is the amount of energy which is transferred by a component in a circuit per unit of time. So usually that is in joules per second. And joules per second has a special unit, which is watts, which is W. So power is measured in watts. Now in a circuit, you have another way to calculate power. And that way is power is voltage times the current. So if you have the voltage um, the potential difference around a component, like we did here, and you also know the, uh, the current going through that component, then you can work out how powerful that component is, which is the voltage times the current. And because power is energy divided by time, you can rearrange that equation, these two equations, to give you the equation for energy used by a, energy converted by a component in a circuit, which is current times voltage times the amount of time that it's switched on for. Now, we talked before about resistance, and resistance is the measurement of how much a particular part of a circuit is trying to stop those electrons flowing. Now, it's a, it's a, a good way to imagine resistance is that if you've got particles inside a metal, the ions, not the electrons, the ions inside a metal, and you've got your electrons trying to flow past, occasionally those electrons will crash into one of these atoms and be deflected off, and so that electron will no longer be conducting electricity. So you can easily imagine that if you have a very, very long wire, there is, a, there is more chance that those electrons will crash into something and not be able to conduct electricity. So resistance is proportional to the length of the wire. So the longer the wire, the more resistance. The longer the wire, the more particles there are to get in the way of the electrons, so resistance is higher. Now, also, if you have a very thick wire, like that, then there's more space for the electrons to try and squeeze past those particles, and so these electrons are able to move through more easily. And so resistance is proportional to 1 over 
the cross-sectional area of the wire. So the fatter the wire, the easier it is for the electrons to flow through, and so the lower the resistance. Big area, low resistance. Okay, and the area is the cross-sectional area of the wire, that bit. So these two relationships about wires and resistance, you need to know for IGCSE. And that is everything for electrical properties.